Welcome to Nervous Rex. We're sitting here with the one and only Santino Rice, my friend of, of many years now. Many. People know you from a few things. Project Runway. Correct. Um, more recently from RuPaul's Drag Race. Correct. And overall uh, a health wizard of sorts. And yeah. we're sitting here looking at your wild Living Foods drink selection you brought for us. That's right. You yeah. want to talk about what are we looking at? Yeah, here? two and a half years ago, I opened up a restaurant with three friends called Wild Living Foods. It's in downtown Los Angeles. And uh, I've been making raw food uh, for nine years. I've been raw vegan myself or eating a living plant-based diet for the past 11 years. It changed my life. And then I helped other people heal themselves of different things. And then it just basically evolved into me going on tour with people like Diplo and Skrillex and ASAP Ferg and, you know, a bunch of other. ASAP Ferg. Yeah. He yeah. went down the healthy route. Well, he, he, uh, when I met him, he had never eaten kale before in his life. And I fed him his first. What the kale? What? <laughs> I fed him his first kale salad, and he'll he'll tell you too that we were on this we were on this train uh, tour through Canada. We're getting into it. I'm getting yeah, right yeah. into no, it, it's but going, it's like it's we're uh, uh, on this train tour through Canada, and he was working on a little song called "I'm on a New Level," and he let me jump on the Come track on. and drop a verse on, on "I'm on a New Level." No, no, I'm not on the song, oh, but, but they, you were part of the process. Yeah, yeah, dude, and it was so dope. It was yeah. so dope. You, well, you, well, you're someone who's always on a new level. You, uh, I know you personally, so I understand that you're you you're you're a very unique guy, fashion wise. You have a very warm heart. You're very uh, the things that I, I heard something that you did at Burning Man. We'll get into Burning Man in okay. a minute because you know again I I, be, I sound like that guy now who talks about Burning Man to people who've never been. It's obnoxious. <laughs> So you did something that I heard about. I want okay. to see if this is true that you, st I don't know if you started this. So basically what you do is if it's somebody fir if somebody's first burn, uh -huh. you have a letter okay. that you bring while they watch the man burn that you give to them. Is that your move? Sure, that's, that's my here, move. Look, yeah. Explain that because I think it's well, a beautiful thing you do. You know, um, And this coconut water is amazing as amazing? fuck. I know. It's this baby Thai cokey. Yeah. Dude. Young dude. Thai coconut. Young Thai it's, coconut. Why, is these the why are these the best ones? Well, these are the best ones because they're not pasteurized uh, and so anything that comes out of a box or a can coconut water that dude, that it's garbage that's fire right this there. this is the closest thing to human blood plasma oh that's right like it's, if you were like somewhere one regalia off of blood yeah so yeah. if you can basically get uh blood transfusion with, with coconut your, or, or coconut water or saline solution those mm. are the only three things that can go in your veins my but, friend dr chris or ryan's Heron. wife oh, Heron. Heron. my friend dr chris <laughs> ryan's wife saved a man in africa with a coconut yeah he saved his life yeah, plugged absolutely. a coconut right into him so sorry to cut you off let's go backwards to you yes. doing the burning man letter okay. of love yeah, so, you know, one of the nicest things I could think of to give to someone, especially friends who have everything or like we all, you know, we can all, you know, kind of get whatever we want, whatever, right. you know, it's like really what you want to hear um, at the burn is some love from close family members. And so, you know, sometimes I have to like find people's parents on Facebook or sometimes I know their parents so I can just hit them up or find their sister right. or whatever. So I, I, I contact them. I get them to write a, a meaningful letter or say like, Hey, what would you like to say to your son or daughter at, at, you know, at this time? And like, I would really love and be honored to present this to them while at Burning Man, you know, and while they're watching, is it always well, while the man's no, burning or no. oh, okay, okay. Sometimes it's like, sometimes people's birthdays fall on right. that week and they're not with their family, but it's their birthday. And then you're also at the I biggest see. party in the world. So it, your birthday kind of gets overshadowed yeah. like, during the burn. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like Echo's birthday was at yeah, the burn, yeah. but she's too young to know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, um, I think it's a beautiful thing that you do because I watched our good friend Austin do that because I just met Austin on this trip. So I, yes. I wasn't in his life yet to get the letter, but yeah. I watched him do it for everybody else. Yeah. And it was a really cool thing. And then he said he learned it from yes. Tino. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's my little brother. Yeah. He's your like, little brotage, you know, protege. Yeah, yeah. Let's 
let's go backwards a little bit. You and I have been in LA. Everyone kind of knows everybody. Yeah. You were a frequenting at me and Mickey Avalon shows at one point. I think I remember seeing you like, out in the crowd and people were like, dude, Santino's here. Like before we were really even friends Dope. and you would come to our show yeah. as yeah, a yeah, fan yeah. of me and Mickey and, uh, and, and you were there supporting us. And I was in, you know, I was in Mr. Right. You were Wright. Mr. Right video. I was in the Mr. Right That's video. right. Like, uh, this is even before then. I think you were at the shows. I remember seeing you yeah. out before Mr. Yes, right video. Yes. So you've so, been a s- supporter. So I've been a fan of yours right. since 2002. Uh huh. I mean, I, I've known of you before that. Right. Okay? Like we're and we're the same age. We came exact up at same year. 74. Like, I think I, I've you're known August of you. 20th. I'm July 20th. Yes. We're like a, yeah. pretty close. Yeah. So um, you know, in 2002, um, around the time that I met. Tony Ward right. and Greg, you remember like uh-huh. the whole the whole crew. Um, we uh, we had that demo of yours uh, of the, you Dude, know like yeah, you thirteen songs around, yeah, and like yeah. I still have it. I know I still have it. I I was like looking for it, no. but it's like I have boxes of just like CDs and tapes, yeah, yeah. and I'm like <laughs> I'll find it though because you're one of only be, a few people that I, has that. Dude, and Tony's obsessed with it. Dude, he loves we, it. It was the soundtrack. Of, of of our lives like for for a good couple years that like, makes it all worth like, it that's why i do it because i never <laughs> expected to monetize or tour the world doing music i did it for my friends to drive so around good. and smile and laugh so we laugh and Dude, laugh and laugh it's so I, that's all good. i wanted so that's good all and I can wanted. i can i tell you like let's let's just chill for one second because okay. i want to just tell you like how much i love you as a human being in hollywood like i don't i know that a lot of people Maybe, you know, know you from the show, know you from from TV, movies, music, Dirt Nasty, all that. You are such a lovely human being and you always were like a professional. Like I've seen you, I've seen you perform at like a Christmas party on a chair for like five people. Were you at that, was that Tony Ward thing? You were there. That was, <laughs> dude, a, that was a tough one. That was a tough dude, one. And I was just like, this dude, man, like, like. You you keep your word. You showed up for that party, and then it was like it wasn't quite going on. But I think you were like double booked that day or something like that. You right. had to go to another party in the hills or something for okay. it was a Christmas like thing, whatever holiday parties. But you you showed up. You just it was like kind of one of those kind of things where you got to hook up. The, you know the it XLR grimy, cable. Yeah. We need the <laughs> we need the 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 adapter from the XLR cable to the to the quarter inch jack right. or whatever. But you just stood on a chair and yeah. you, <laughs> yeah, dude. you and you performed for this party. And I was just like, that motherfucker is ill, dude. like so ill, dude. That's you were and there. so and and brother, like uh, even before, like I would say, so I knew your music. I knew and knew I knew that, and then. I remember the first time I actually met you. Like, was that? I don't at, remember that. Where was I it? I know. It was at, it was on Las Palmas. I think the club was called Las Palmas. Yep. There were couches, like, kind of in the center. Do you remember? Like, in, like, you, there were two, two long kind of couches and you could sit on the backs of the couches too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was a big kind of Hollywood it was moment. The spot. That time was the spot. That it was, was the, the spot. Era, I mean, yeah. it was like, Early two thousand. I remember going there and all the Backstreet Boys were buying me drinks and like you know when you when you do a show like Project Runway or whatever and it's like it was big yeah big and everyone everyone was like well all the right people I say were like fans of me and then half the world hated my guts and sent me uh, right you like, became uh, the villain death, but, death threats right. yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's either you know it was either one or the other but it seemed like all the right people I was meeting and connecting with on a on a level that. You know, they understood me and understood my sense of humor and all that. Right. So, um, you know, I'm sure you've you've gotten plenty of people sure. not inter you know, like not very happy yeah. with your language Absolutely. or the, you know, yeah. your sense of humor, or whatever. Right. So you just deal with that. Um, but I was there at that party and and you were too, and we met, I think it was like for Surface magazine too, or something, if I remember. But everyone was there, Cobra Snake and the it was it was a time, mm-hmm. definitely a, a, a time. So a moment in time. Uh, I I remember meeting you and, and being like super happy to meet you because, you know, I knew your, your mixtape, you know, I knew that demo that it, <laughs> I've been listening to for, for years. Right. So, and then shortly after 
I were I helped like do shoot your album cover in that alleyway. Oh, remember? with with, with Cobra Snake, you helped. No, show, oh, no, which Tony one? Tony Ward shot. Oh, it. that's right. That's and, right. And that's and, right. And, now I remember. And I was all there, and then um, that was for MySpace. Yeah. Believe it or not, I remember yeah. now. I had the fake black uh, bloody <laughs> yeah, lip, yeah, dude. and uh, it was a photo shoot that Tony and you styled it. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and and Johnny yeah. Xander showed up. Yes, I remember, yes, yes. and uh, Tony shot it, and we were shooting in an alleyway. <laughs> And it was for just for like album. It was just yeah. for anything. It was yeah. just for, I just wanted yes. to shoot with Tony, yeah. and yeah. he wanted to shoot with me. And that's so, right, dude. So I was there too. Oh, and and now I remember I, that. So yeah. and then we came to. A, I mean, I I came to a couple different parties yep. and different performances you guys did uh, on the way here. Coming from downtown, I passed like that one place that's right there. Uh, Which one? Uh, where we played live? Me? Oh, was it uh, LAX? No, uh, that was Las Palmas. Um, I was going down. What street were you on? I was going. Tum- I was coming down um, Sunset, and uh-huh. it's that place that's. Uh, it's in that food court, it, or not? It's sorry. Huh. It's in that shopping center where there's like an Aldi supermarket or something. But it's it's over by like Zang Cow Chicken. Okay. You know okay. Where that is? Yeah. 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 I'm trying but to remember it, what the. It's but it all was a blur. like it was like yeah. It's this venue okay. that it's not. It doesn't exist anymore. Got it. It might, got be, it. It might be some kind of like. Um, that's uh, 15 years ago. Yeah, we're talking. No, yes. well, yeah, early, over two, early, yeah, 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 early 2000s, which was but that was when LA was still fun. I think I remember you just dropped that T-shirt. Listen to Dirt Nasty, yeah, like and that, the black one. Right. I got it at that show. Okay, um, there was like a photo booth there and stuff like that. But it was like I don't know. I, yeah, that was so there. much, so dude, much, so yeah. much, so much has changed since like, then. So <laughs> a lot. You so let's let's even go into yeah. a little bit about you and how you became raw vegan. If you yeah. don't mind talking sure, yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, if no, you don't absolutely. mind to disclose this information about it was Not a health situation yeah. that you had that thrust you into this this lifestyle and diet, which saved your life. Yeah, I yeah, mean, absolutely. What happened? So uh, around the time when I was twenty eight, I started getting really horrible rheumatoid arthritis, which is what now for us uh, people who don't know rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you first feel it as like super achy joints. You um, a lot of people have it and just kind of, just kind of say like, oh, it's hereditary, you know, cause kind of like most people, if you, if you're lucky enough to, to, you know, grow old, you, you, you probably will ultimately have rheumatoid arthritis at some point or some achy joints or like, it's basically what arthritis is. It's like, if you, if you, someone says I have arthritis, yeah, it's usually it, rheumatoid. It's, it's okay, usually rheumatoid arthritis. It. All right. So then, you know, come to find out also I had a uh, seriatic arthritis, which okay. shows up, it shows up on your skin as psoriasis. Got it. It also is kind of a degenerative, um, bone disease of sorts it's a, it's all they're all connected autoimmune diseases um so the rheumatoid arthritis the seriatic arthritis the psoriasis like dealing with all kinds of specialists and doctors and here in la you know i, I went to all the best doctors specialists and and rheumatologists and then uh for for years, I'm talking like I spent over two hundred thousand dollars on Western medicine. I'm going to Western like medicine. Going, going and on having some white man not tell you what's up, right. right? And 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 them all, no matter who I went to, they just wanted to prescribe me um, basically the the same three uh, pharmaceuticals that you inject into yourself. And did you do? Did you go down that white I never, man? Path? I never did. And I you never did. did but well, I, why not? Did you? Did you know deep inside this wasn't yeah, right? Yeah, or did, what, what? yeah. I knew. Like you're a Midwest is, boy. I'm a I'm a Midwest boy. I grew I grew up in uh, St. Charles, Missouri, which is just right outside of St. Louis. So and, what, uh, you weren't exposed to homeopathic or Eastern medicine, were you? How did you know to not go down this road? Is uh, it an instinct? Was it your gut? Yeah, was your microbiome yeah. on point, and your gut said, Dude, "Don't do this." My my gut, you know, like I. I, uh, how can, how can I succinctly say this? My, my intuition right. and my gut right. is what has gotten me to this point at 44 years old. Like, you look, like and you look, I'm not every, just saying this, yeah. you look very healthy. Thank you, brother. Your skin, you. yeah. your, your energy's always been great, but yeah. you look healthy and young. Thank you, brother. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. What yeah. Di- let the food be thy medicine and let the medicine be thy food, said Absolutely. Hippocrates. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I Twerking still, and I still, and forever am always, seeking out something new something that that uh you know i think i'm just open you're I'm a not, curious I'm, monkey i'm, I'm like we're both I'm like super, that super we're the curious monkeys super curious yeah. so you know last year i did a, a juice fast for 111 days wow. too you know so i've i've done 40 day water fast i've done 111 day juice fast i've i've um 
you know, I've been raw vegan. I haven't eaten any animals or, or, or byproducts, uh, for 11 years, you wow. know, and I've, I've never felt better in my life, you know, so I feel better now at 44 than I did when I was 28 and I was super arthritic. And if it would rain for three days in LA, I would be in bed for three days. I couldn't even, wow, move. It was like, that I bad. was just, I was just, I felt like a thousand year old man, like huh. all curled in on myself and like, um, and cause what happens is the barometric pressure drops and then the pressure in all your joints, uh, just, uh, swells up and you're super inflamed. And ultimately I found my, my saving through reading a lot of books, uh, and, and any information that, uh, I could get my hands on everything from the Gerson therapy to eating right for your blood type to, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, like stacks of books, books okay. taller than you me. You did the okay. homework. Did uh, just reading as much as I could. And everything that I read, even, even, uh, I will, I'll, I'll say also spiritual doctrine that I read as well. I feel like I can tell what is true and what is false or like what is what came from what is what is divinely given and what was man man's ego put okay. into the equation. And so I I read things and I and I go, yes, that that's true. I'm going to do that. And I basically I just made a list of all the things that I was going to do with my life and my lifestyle. And I started to apply those things to my life and it took two and a half years for me to reverse all those things, but I got rid of all those things. So that's the, that's the, that was my knowing and my connection to a Got living, it. a living plant-based diet and through juice fasting and through, you know, putting all these superfoods in your body and just not, not, not signing up for the same okie doke of everyone doing the same thing of the taco truck and the Korean barbecue and the pizza place and the this and that. And what, you know, it's like, that was killing me. That was poisoning me to death. And not only, you know, so I was dealing with all this autoimmune stuff. I had an endoscopy of my small intestine. And now was it endoscopy? An endoscopy is like they send a basically like a camera and like a little, you know, uh, clippers or, you know, tweezers or something. Like they take a sand, they can get a sample uh, right. of your, uh, small intestine. Right. And, and they can also check it out. Um, I, my small intestine was super inflamed. Like I, it was, there was so much inflammation and basically what was happening was, um, I've had celiac, I had celiac disease my entire life. I had a gluten intolerance that's so bad that every time I ate wheat, barley or rye or had a beer or anything with, with those grains in it, that my body would fight it as if I would just eat. So you're truly gluten, uh, you can't poison. have gluten. Whereas I think a lot of people over, just like people say, Oh, I have AD. I, yeah. I think people say it not, without really knowing you yes. really yes. cannot have gluten. And so, well, I don't, I don't test it now, but I think if I did have gluten, I would, I would be okay because I don't, I no longer have that inflammation in my, in my gut. I don't have that inflammation in my small intestine. And so my thing is, um, even 11 years ago when I first found out that I was gluten intolerant, uh, I, there was no even mention of gluten. A lot of people don't even know what is what gluten means. You know right. what I mean? It just be, then it over the years, I watched it become kind of a trend or like a catchphrase and the gluten free pickles or whatever. And it's like, well, pickles aren't, yeah, you know, we're, we're never had gluten anyway. You know, right. it's like these kind of things. So, um, it was, uh, figuring that out. And then a light bulb went off and I thought, you know what? I bet if I heal my gut, all this other stuff will go away. And this is just through my, my own research and reading and being my own guinea pig and, um, not believing what all the doctors were telling me, you know, it's that like, it takes a lot of balls to do it, that because most it, people be, uh, I don't think most people would do that yeah. to be quite honest. Most yeah. people probably just want to survive yeah. and, and stay as safe as possible. So, but the, but the, the it, downside of all these pharmaceutical drugs, like they even say it on the package, like may cause brain leukemia, right. you know what I mean? And millions of, of, of people in the world are on these. These are like trillion dollar drugs. Yeah. And ultimately, if you just went into the woods and drank water for 40 days, you'd probably reverse a lot of the things that you it crazy? are sick with. Oh, yeah. It's so crazy how, how much how wrong people how how and it's not even anyone's fault it's like it's, this is the system that we're born into this is. it's the matrix that we're born yes. into it's the game that the game that's rigged and the most people don't have the uh, the wherewithal or the balls or the uh, education or you know you you did it you rolled the dice and it worked for you because uh i'm looking at the end result right now yeah. and it worked for you 
And now, uh, now, do you think, in effect, that would be the case for just about anybody, or is this specific to your condition? And I guess there's so many different things: diet for different people. It is. Some it people is. might need to, depending on their autoimmune situation. Some people might need to have like a like Jordan Peterson, for instance. Sure, he has to. He's on the carnivore diet yeah. because he had to for his right. condition. Right. So everybody's different. Yes. And so it's and, not like you can tell. And there's a and there's certain things like even even when I started. Um, on on a living plant based diet or a raw vegan diet, I I also uh, I cut out nightshades because they can cause what's a nightshade a, a nightshade is that when you like go to, a, oh that's a food yeah like a eggplant or oh. or tomatoes or even goji berries why is that called a nightshade they're they're nightshade vegetables because they're just a they're ty- they're a variety of related vegetables oh, I see. that. I see. Can cause uh, inflammation in people who have already like a pre, uh, you know, disposed uh, autoimmune disease. So, so you 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 fixed yourself, you yes. healed yourself, yeah, that's correct. And, and and you did it with diet, and you did it with lifestyle changes. Correct. And now here you are. How many years later? This is over ten years later. Yeah, yes. And yeah. now you've and and you probably could have gone back to some of your other dietary ways if you wanted to, but instead you said, "I feel so amazing. I look great. I feel great. I'm sticking with this, this routine." Yeah. And now you opened up a restaurant. Yes. Uh, which is what it's called. Wild. It's called Wild Living Foods. Wild Living yeah. Foods. It's at, Downtown uh, Los Angeles. Yep. I'm not just saying this because you're here. It's the no. best type of. There's the best restaurant I've yeah. had of raw food. Right uh, usually the. I don't find it to be my favorite, but yeah. the food was great. Thank you. Um, yeah. we, you, I, you gave me an amazing meal. We had the, uh, I think it was those rolls. It was like a, a, like a sushi type roll or uh-huh. something. What were those ones Probably called? Probably like the spicy tuna spicy roll. Spicy tuna the, roll. The tuna is made out of sprouted almonds. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, right now I'm drinking the almond of affogato. Yeah, almond affogato. This, yeah. Is, de- this is delicious. Yeah. Uh, I, we're going to go through all the juices. Okay. So far, the coconut water self-explanatory. <laughs> this one here is, uh, oh, this is coffee. Almonds, yeah. cashews, vanilla. Vanilla bean honey. Yes. Um, now, did you do all of this? Did you design the name, so the branding, everything? We, it's all you. You know, no. Who's we? I mean, it's we and uh, three of my friends. Okay. Uh, we got together. We all have similar stories and similar connections, uh, like personal connections to raw food. This isn't. This isn't something that. We're just, we just it's like not a hustle, on for, a no, hustle this, you, or something like that. No. You believe in it in your heart and it, and it saved your life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, even before, even before opening this restaurant, I made food for a lot of other people. I, I, like I said, I went on tour with people and like, um, I may, I went to a lot of festivals making food as well. And just like, basically, you know, uh, I feel like because I'm a creative person that came with a fashion background, but I, I have, I have a great palate for different flavors and I have a great memory for some of my favorite foods and then translating them into this language of preparing food, which is, you know, uh, about the mindfulness of the preparation and about preparing things under 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Because if you go over 118, you start to degrade the food quality. And that's why, you know, most cooked food is overcooked food. Overcooked food is dead food. Dead food makes for dead people. Whereas I make living food that makes you live and gives you life. And that's, and we live in a society where most people are overfed and undernourished. It's why they, you can drink, you can eat a whole bag of Doritos and still be hungry. 20 minutes later because you basically just ate a bunch of toilet paper that was turned into some orange triangles that has it's void of nutrition and so um i know for a fact that i eat more food than like an obese american they just eat the wrong food there's certain people that are that that everywhere you look there's no there's not really great options for eating and then things that we used to know even like when you when you look at like a chicken or an egg or dairy, dairy products, milk, things like that, that, well, my great grandparents grew up on that. It's like, yeah, but it's a different animal today in 2019. It's a totally different thing. And like, not only, yeah, that's a chicken, but what is that chicken made out of? What's inside of that meat that you're ingesting? Like what's inside of that milk? It's like all those things. So I have a connection to veganism or raw, like a living plant-based diet because of my own health. And that's where it started. But then I opened up to have a compassion for all sentient beings on this planet that came second but i do understand that now as as an important thing in my in my life now for listeners sentient yeah. being means an animal that has a conscious is, is, uh, that sure. feelings as a, would, as, uh, that, as a that, consciousness and and, right. and feelings and is is just as important as as humans i right. mean it's like we're you know we're 
we're going through some um, some times where you know we it seems like sometimes we take uh, two steps forward and then one step back and you know it's like we're still like it's what's so boring as as a person who you know I'm I'm of mixed race my mother is half black and and, and half Italian my father's German Jewish Scottish English Welsh, oh you are a mix French and Native American oh, you're a passionate so, mix so this this mix that I've always I've I've just been this this kind of growing up in Missouri, it was weird because I, I didn't look like anybody else. I didn't have like a best friend that looked like me. I grew up mostly in a, in, you know, I went to a private Catholic school. It was mostly white. Okay. So I was treated kind of like a foreign exchange student or like I was from another planet, you know, and I'm super flamboyant. I mean, you know, I was like, I you was like style, this. I was like this guy. in, yeah, yeah, yeah. You in stood fourth, out. fourth you grade, stood out. you know. Um, so. <laughs> I'm trying citrus paradise right now, guys. <laughs> right uh, right. Grapefruit, orange, lemon. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. And, um, and so, uh, you know, my point being as far as like, uh, I don't even know. Yeah. What, what's my point? No, you're, ba- <laughs> you're basically just saying that you, uh, you, were, you were a different bird in your zoo yes. that you grew up yeah. in. Yeah. Um, you were... Possibly, um, you beat your you 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 beat off to your own drum. Yeah, let's just say, yeah, all right. Absolutely. And absolutely. and you have uh you have style points. You have food. You, the food that you've gotten into is artistic. It's not just healthy. Um, you, even looking at your branding right here, like everything you do is fly. You're right just on. that dude. Right okay, always you, have been. Every Thank time you, I see you, you're in a great yeah. outfit. You're just that motherfucker. Thank you. Brother. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I never really got to see too much of Project Runway or your show, but everybody seems to to have responded to you obviously very well because you've you've parlayed that into a career yeah absolutely and what at what point did you make the transition from saying hey you know i'm a fashion um in the fashion world because this is years after you already made the decision to save your body and your mind and your soul and your spirit with your diet why did you is this just sort of um uh uh, expanding into the world of cooking is it a passion because you you could do do you do both still or is it you just no i i mean i'll never still styling people well, sure. I mean, if, right. the, if the situation is 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 right, and it's like, and any of my friends, and definitely, you know, d- d- right before Burning Man, you know, it like goes into overdrive with all the costumes and everything like that. Is like, I still am, am definitely interested in in expressing myself through fashion and through to you know, well, yeah. What cool? What, what's, I think there are two really amazing things that you get to do because those are, uh, I'd say, it's a vocation, something yeah. you love. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is that the definition of vocation? Yeah. It's a career that you love doing. Yeah. It's not absolutely. like you're sitting in an office. Absolutely. So you love and live this fashion and you love and live this food yeah. diet stuff. Yeah. So you get to make a living off of something that you truly care about yes. and are very good at. I remember seeing you recently before I went to Burning Man for the first time. I got dragged downtown against, not against my will, but I didn't really want to go. All of a sudden, my <laughs> friends are like, we're going to a Mayan rave. Uh, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, we're going downtown Mayan yes, warrior. Yes, I have no idea what yes, this is. Yes, I get yes, down there yes. and I see you. You're already a six foot six <laughs> motherfucker and you have a Mayan headdress on bouncing around. And I'm like, is that Tino here? What is he doing here? And you're like, what's up? Are you coming? And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? This is you're like, this is the best art car yeah, at Burning Man. This yeah, is it. Yeah. And they had to keep it low because the yeah, neighbors, yes. it was like downtown yes. LA. And I remember just tripping out. I'm looking at this art car like, this is fucking dope. I just bought an RV. And I said, and you're like, are you coming to Burning Man? Yeah. And I said, I don't know. Maybe. And I didn't yeah, know yet. And, yeah, I, and yeah, the next yeah. thing you know. I got my ticket. I'm going to Burning Man. I show up at Burning Man and I ride out the first night onto the playa next to Mayan Warrior. And I remember going, this is the one from downtown. Everything's kind of coming together. And we get out. It's playing the tribal, beautiful Latin music, the Mexican tribal music. Yes. Get out there. And I'm looking around and I say to my friends, uh, I go, are all the art cars this dope? I thought that everyone was like that. And everyone's like, no, 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 no. This is the one. Yeah. So I remember in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, dude, this is just going to be all these. Uh, and then, of course, there's beautiful art cars. Oh, sure. There are other ones oh, like yeah. that. But that yeah. was like the one. So yeah, my first is. experience of Burning Man was off of oh. Burning Man at Mine oh. Warrior downtown. Yeah. And you were there. Yeah. You yeah. were like the you were like the dude yeah. there just killed. You were just yeah. pumped. Yeah. And, uh, and you looked so dope. You had like the outfit on. On, like as if you were a Mayan warrior. Well, yeah, and you, that, you know that that whole headdress was made out of, out of real flowers. You remember that? I that don't was, remember. It was all real flowers. It was I dark, yeah. and I, and then <laughs> did you wear it again at Burning Man? No, or was that no. a fashion faux pas? No, no, no. I didn't wear it again. Okay. I didn't wear it again. It was just for that. But it, but I don't have a problem with wearing things twice. And right. actually, people should wear things 
twice. Yeah, why not? That's ridiculous. Three, four times. You know yeah, that's I mean? ridiculous. So, and and I've learned another I'm, thing. I learned at Burning Man is you can get away as a guy, especially you want to be comfortable. I brought way too many clothes to the burn this year. I didn't know. I brought just like so many outfits. And at the end of the day, I wore like a couple ponchos. I went to the th- the thrift store sure. they have there where you pick out your outfits yes. because I didn't know and I didn't get it. I'm just like the new guy there. And now I know to pack yeah. less clothes. Yeah. And I brought way too much food, so I'm still learning to burn. I'm a cool. I'm a learning man. Yeah, yeah. And there's so much to learn. And I remember finding you out there at some point. You were at uh, we have a mutual friend named Austin yes. at Indigotopia. Yes. Anyone who needs a little retreat in Southern California Check and you want to go get sound bathed up <laughs> and go have some healing done, look at look up Indigotopia out in in Joshua Tree area. Yes, that's our mutual friend. And you got him on the path of eating and Absolutely. living right and Absolutely. burning right. Yeah. And and he is such a great guy that I've made friends with recently. And it's funny because I see in him you. Yeah. And you've yeah. taught him the way. Yeah. And it's cool to see because he's spreading the same message, which is beautiful and healthy and yeah. positive yeah. and it, it's healing and everything you guys are about, I'm about it. Right and, and I grew right up on, in right San on. Francisco around hippies. I've been around that shit my whole life. I know when there's bullshit and people use it for the wrong reasons. And I know when someone's fake as fuck or someone's right. real. And you guys are really uh, walk. You guys walk the walk. Right on, and so I support it. And I'm happy to be your friends. Yeah. And, and and I want anybody out there, if they need a little break, look up Indigotopia. Just look it up. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. Um, have you gone to a retreat there yet and hung out besides just him being your boy? I've gone twice now. Yeah. Yeah, and got sound bathed up. Absolutely. Dude, yeah. he's great. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I've, I've sat, you know, I I married Austin and Carly That's out right. there you married as them. well. Yep. And um, you know, we've 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 been friends for many years. We met through Fashion World Yeah, things. that's right. He did and, fashion. Uh, yeah, I met him when he was like 18 years old or something right. and, like had his first line and like we became fast friends and then we we you know, we've been through a lot. We've had a yeah. lot of history together, but when he Did you take he, him to his first burn? Uh, yeah. How many burns yes. have you been doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, How many oh burns? Uh, I'm picturing you to be a nine burner. No, nine, no, ten. not yet. Not uh, even? But, but I, you know, the first time I went was 1996. Oh, okay. And then yeah. you took a break. And then I took a break. Wow. It wasn't, I wasn't ready, quite ready for okay. it, you know? And then, uh, and and I actually went right after like a, a fashion thing that happens in Las Vegas called uh what is that thing called? The is big, it, but it's the like, trade show yeah, thing? Yeah, the big trade yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I forget what it's called, yeah. too. I don't I, even know if that thing um, still happens anymore. Um, there's so, so many things. We're, we're going so fast. No, it's so okay. We can go. Like, I, it's I, okay. I want to talk about We're covering it all. When I when I change as far as like uh, my diet and, and lifestyle, it's it's not just what you ingest. It's also what you, you rub into your skin. I haven't worn deodorant in, I in could smell. over 11 years. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And, uh, and so, you know, it's like, I don't even, because I don't eat all the, the cooked food and stuff, like I don't have, you know, I can go, you know, even at Burning Man, you know, you go for a while without a shower necessarily, right. you know, and like, and I smell amazing. It's yep. like, not, it's not, it doesn't, I don't smell the same way. I have like a different body You're not odor. putting all those poisons in you. No. No. Okay. Can so. we go backwards a little bit? Because you have to understand that most people listening, including myself, might not be familiar enough with what raw means. Now, let's explain to me and to my listeners okay. that a raw diet, you said it's 118 degrees. Yes. Anything under that is considered raw. raw. Anything yes. cooked over 118 is no longer raw and the food is dead therefore you're ingesting dead energy Correct. and as we know everything is energy and vibrations everything, everything. and if you're eating that then you become that yes. you are what you eat yes. it's cliche but it's true yes so okay so let's start there with less this is 101 raw diet right. uh, lessons for the listeners including myself now what else is would be considered raw as far as when you see you're at the health food store and it's like raw walnuts for instance right raw nut what's sure. the difference what does that mean so raw just mean you know like especially nuts, right. um, you don't want to eat roasted nuts, uh, salted roasted nuts like the, the you know, it's, see, so I wouldn't think that would be bad, but I guess cause no, it's cooked. It's, it's, it's bad because the roasting has cooked out all of the, the nutrition ah, and I then see. usually the salt that they use is like really terrible iodized white they're not salt using himalayan sea salt no, right. they're not using himalayan mountain salt right yeah. so, oh is that what yeah, it is yeah yeah i guess there's pink, no sea in the himalayan but you know so the the thing about uh pink salt it, whether it's himalayan salt or from the andes or like volcanic salt or hawaiian you know salt you know it's pink um those those minerals have been on earth here uh for millions of years since the beginning of time and that is is not just a flavor thing. It's not just a salty taste thing. It's also you're putting 84 trace minerals back into your body. You know, so it's, it's, 
it's a it's a uh, a mineral supplement as well. So you don't want to ever eat white table salt. Basically, we're in the situation we're at with the obesity epidemic, the di- diabetes epidemic, because of w- white salt and white sugar, right? And and terrible oils and deep frying the, the the preparation of food. That's like you basically turn food into plastic and things like that. And that's why people become obese. It's not because they eat more food than I do. It's because they're eating the wrong food and it's prepared the wrong way. So if if you can keep food as close to the original way that that you know the, that that it was, it was made was right. intended, you know, then. Uh, you'll get more nutrients from it. You'll have, uh, you know, more of the vitamins and minerals that you need to be, to function and, and have as energy. So are you familiar with Paul check by any chance? He's a nutritionist and, and he, uh, he talks a lot about the same stuff you do. And he says, um, for instance, here's another one is that if you're going to drink a glass of water in the morning, put some Himalayan salt into the Absolutely. water because otherwise you're just drinking water, which goes right through you. But you need some mineral component, yes. which is essentially what Gatorade and all these sports drinks are selling you right. with sugar in it is that's the electrolytes that you need are really just minerals. No, absolutely. So if you were to just take a glass of water and, and put some lemon and sea yes. salt in there and stir and, it up, that is some, the best way you could hydrate. Some apple cider vinegar. There you, I do that. That's yeah. a good morning one, yes. right? Flush yes. it out. Yes. Uh, you have gone down this health path you've gone down the fashion path what else do you see yourself doing besides one day moving to bali with me and starting a cult yes well what's uh, in your future what do you see happening there's definitely that um i imagine also like a a place of wellness that also combines like float tanks well, and yeah, okay. Lucia lights and Dude. the, you know, having the, the raw vegan cafe inside of a basically like a Korean spa, but, wow, I but love it. super dialed up. And I love it. You, lay, I see you doing you that. lay on amethyst beds and yep. you, you, you have like this fully healing experience. You can stay for days, you know? Oh, I'm uh, not and, leaving. And, and, and do you and, see yourself in Bali one day? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so we talked about this recently. You have your dog, you have your restaurant. I don't think it's time right now, but I see it's in coming. the near future, it's coming. it's coming. You disappearing in <laughs> Bali and opening up a place that yes. has these dietary, and obviously you're going to be looking fly as a motherfucker. Yeah, absolutely. The Bali style. I mean, absolutely. dude, you just got like, it's the, it's the dopest place in the fucking world. <laughs> Between Burning Man and Bali yeah. and your diet and your yes. whole thing, like you, yes. you're going to, you're already on the, you're on your way there. Yeah. I am just catching up. I'm just learning about eating, you know, correctly. I'm just learning about Burning Man. I'm just learning about uh, this tapping into my spirituality. I'm learning about doing the right cycle. There's a lot of things that I'm Amazing. scratching the surface on <laughs> that I'm that yeah. I'm open to sure. like a motherfucker yeah, because yeah, yeah. I did all of the yeah. uh, low vibration yeah, shit out yeah, there yeah, yeah, for yeah, a very yeah. long yeah, time. Yeah. And you know what? That low vibration shit uh, gets old real quick. Yeah. I'm just talking about when I say low vibration, I'm talking about drinking and smoking weed and banging the chicks at the Absolutely. club. Like all that shit doesn't Absolutely. uplift your spirit no. or make you a better no. person, yeah. but diet, uh, right energy field around you with the right people, um, wearing the right stuff. Yeah. That's that high vibration yeah. lifestyle that I see you, Austin, certain people around me living that I want to be a part of. Right and on, I want right to help on. spread because I think everybody needs to be vi- vibrating on that frequency. Yeah. Cause imagine, this world that's what's so dope about burning man is everyone's operating on a certain frequency yeah. and that's what's so amazing about bali is everyone's operating on a certain frequency and this sounds hippie to some of you motherfuckers listening are probably rolling <laughs> your eyes going on this hippie shit but listen i am from san francisco my parents are fucking hippies i've been around it i get it i know it i and and i know deep inside that i'm actually just coming full circle back to what i was supposed to be i yeah. kind of went down the wrong route which is like you know, uh, living in New York City and Los Angeles and fame and money sure, and shit, yeah. all that shit. Okay, yeah. great. I did it. Yep. Got it out of my yep. system. I'm coming back home. Yeah. I feel like I'm coming home, which is the high vibration. Absolutely. Shit. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, and, and I, you're doing it. Can I tell you, like, like all the, you know, I, I take nothing personally and, and everything is a joke to me as well. Right. Like, you know, so I, I, I've, I spent years like hearing you like make fun of Bernie man yep. and, and make fun of certain things. Sure. And I, and I always just like every time I would laugh and I watch everything. I watched them all. I watched all the skits and everything. And I just thought like that dude, he's got to just go. He's just got to go. And I always just like sent love your way. And just dude. like, and I was like, no, he's going to get it. I dude. know. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not counting him out and I'm not going to like, I'm like, I know he's going to get it. And I was like, wrong. You, 
Dude, I was so dude. wrong, and I love yeah. being wrong. Being wrong is the best because then you learn the right answer. There's, and, and, and once you put your yeah. ego aside and you realize, like, I don't want to be one of those, uh, what, what are the, uh, I forget there's a term for it, like, uh, uh, not a meathead, or like a, it's, they call them a himbo, like yeah, a male sure. bimbo yeah, is a sure. himbo. Sure. I don't want to be that guy that's just worried about doing curls <laughs> right. at the gym and fucking like, dude, there's so much more to life. Yeah, and, and, and I was... It's just simply wrong about yeah. what it even yeah. was. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I know. It's too easy to make fun I know. of. I know. So here I am now, a recent converted burner, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I see the light, yeah. and it's so exciting because I'm like, holy shit, now the second half of my life, I could have this new experience yeah. and this new adventure. And it's not, and you know what? But at the same time, I'm right on schedule. No, this absolutely. Is, it was and supposed it comes, to happen this way. It comes right at oh, the dude. right time that you need it, dude. you know? I'm, Cause I'm, I did that. I did that whole thing, the Hollywood thing, and like you know. Yep. Uh, so you whatever. got fame pretty yeah. much overnight. How did you get into the like? For instance, you got on the show Project Runway, which yeah. most people so, sort of know. That was your yeah. first thing. So did I, you audition for the I, show? I, I did. And you I, got on the show, and you were the star of the show, yes, basically. Yes. I, even I, though I, you're the villain, people love to. But you know, it's so weird. Is you that know, right, it's, villain? It, it, I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, I was. I was. I was technically spun, Cayenne West, spun into, Kanye yes, West. Yes, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try the yeah. Cayenne West yeah, now, which that. is orange pineapple, <laughs> Cayenne ginger. All right. Yeah. So I uh, smart name. Yeah, I I worked in fashion for for many years, and then uh, there got to be a point where you just like you reach a, a salary cap working for other designers. You like that? Oh, I love yeah. all of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you know, I, you reach a salary cap where when you're working for other people, and so there was a point where the first season of Project Runway happened, and I watched it, and I was getting calls from all over the place, like Santino, you got to do this show, like you got to watch it, and then you got to try out for the next season, you know. And the the second season almost didn't happen. Well, you were on season two. I was on season two. Right. Season one was kind of like a cult sleeper hit. Uh-huh. It didn't do very well necessarily, um, and there was a lot of, uh, you know craziness between the bravo network and the weinstein company because right. harvey weinstein owned the project runway yeah. as well so they they argued and whatever and the second season almost didn't happen it, you know what all i can say was like perfect timing of course because just I, like I, I was just talking about i went um i was maybe the last person to show up on the last of day i i show up in line and they, there's a big long line it was downtown at the w hotel and somebody was kind of like going through the line and just kind of like helping people jump the line and they looked at my portfolio and they were just like oh my god like this guy like like i could i could tell that like you know when you go into something, you don't really know like how you how you 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 rate with people. Mm-hmm. And, with, like, with this one, and you it, knew. And as much as like people maybe think that like my ego's out of whack or something like that, I'm always just like questioning everything, and I'm always just kind of like like trying to 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 better myself. So I'm not really worried about being the best in all the time. But right. I just like I I I I could tell that they saw something in me right away that they hadn't seen. Throughout the day, okay. They you picked up basically, on it. You it. Okay. Basically, I'm in the end of this long line. Mm-hmm. They basically take me from the end of the line all the way to the front of the line. I'm in a matter of like 30 seconds. I'm in front of Tim Gunn, and as Tim Gunn, the host, Tim is Gunn it? is one of the mentors and okay. one of the 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 kind of side okay. hosts of the show. Got it. Um, I'm in a room with him and some other uh, judges, and I'm on camera, and I'm showing them my portfolio, and they're like looking at it, and they're just like. They can't believe it. They, they, you also bring some clothes that you've made as well. You talk about them and like, I was very professional with them. I was very kind of just like non plus and just like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just trying to tell them who I was as a, as a designer and as a human being. And, uh, they, they only really saw one side of my personality, you know, but I, but they ultimately picked me to be on the show. And then once I got on the show, I just kind of went for broke and like I had no I had no uh qualms about saying anything or doing anything. I laughed, I cried. I I was completely human and so in doing that, I feel like the producers and the people who were involved in the show, they had a lot to work with. And so it was the first time ever on that show particular that they created an entire arc with the season using my personality and like like for the for half first half of the season they cut out all my laughter like no laughter oh i so just and to, it made to me, villain, to yeah and it made me like seem like 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 i 
took myself too seriously and I didn't laugh at all. Like, and all the cutting things that I would say and all the, like, and all the things that they would use, they would just cut out my laughter afterward, even though like I was just so, kidding. You right. know what I mean? But then what they, they bring it back. And so like, you know, they created this love hate thing and it, and it, and it whipped up into a frenzy that like was pretty awesome. Well, it worked out to your advantage yeah, it did. regardless. It did because yeah. you, because ultimately you take, you take the good, you eliminate the bad, you know, it's like, and you and you just keep it rolling. You know what well, I mean? Well, they need those shows. They need a protagonist and an they antagonist. Do. They need yeah. to do that. And I guess uh, you probably made for some, you know, entertaining b- sound bites yes. and stuff like that. Yes. So yeah. that, that that that's what they do when you sign your life away on those shows. Right. Is that they 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 edit around <laughs> it and make you what they want to make yeah. you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think it was a blessing for you. It was because yeah. it's not like anybody was really like, oh, this guy's a fuck it, fuck him. Yeah. People root for that guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so you came in. Did you win the show? I did not. I but, did not. But I it did. didn't matter because you won. Matter. Because, right, exactly. Because basically, like, everyone, all the talk shows wanted to have me on. Right. All the, you know, I did Regis and Kathy Lee, whatever, Kelly. So, so you won, yeah. <laughs> but, no, but I, won, I won the, the popular Ex- vote. Which is what matters. And, and what's crazy is, like, the, you know, had... had there was a crazy contract too, which like I can talk about now, but it's like the, the, the contract for the winner of project runway at that time, you basically had to give a percentage of all of your lifetime residuals to the Weinstein company for kind of putting you on, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like a crazy backward contract. And so I didn't want to win. Like when I went back to New York to show at fashion week is like, like I was proud of what I made, but I also like kind of didn't want to win. I didn't want to, I didn't want, that to mess up all the good that I'd gotten from right. just being on the show and, and, and where I saw my career going. And I just really felt like a hundred thousand dollars isn't worth signing over your life for the rest of your life of every garment that you ever make that you're going to give a percentage of, of money to. And mm-hmm. I was like, uh, to, to someone else for doing that. So, um, so I'm glad I didn't win, Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, but I, but, and a hundred thousand dollars ends up being 40 oh, no. oh, please, or whatever. Please. Is that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not even half. <laughs> no, it's not. So, so and I'll, I'll also say, I was going to say before, is like when I changed my lifestyle and, and the way that I eat and what I put in my body, uh, on my body, all that, I also, I care about where fabric comes from. I care about where fabric dyes come from, where the color came from to dye the fabric that where it ran off, where, where, where did it, what river did it run into? What did, what child sewed it? What, what, what human rights atrocity occurred in the making of this? Why, how is it we can have something so embroidered and detailed and beautiful cost 1299 at H and M or uh, right. or Forever Twenty One or these pl- these fast fashion places that and it, and we talk about plastic waste and all the landfills and all that and plastic 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 in the ocean plastic island whatever the biggest the biggest thing is fabric waste really fabric waste is way more than, well, than what, plastic what's fabric waste like a clothing item that's been discarded well, sure. what do you mean like, fabric well, waste well so we've got in america especially um a lot of clothes you know when you buy a 12 dollar top it's maybe going to last two or three washes okay right. you know and then or or you just get old it's a, you wore it on that date and then you never wear it again you know it's it gets thrown That's in the more bin. so than plastic bottles and stuff yes. is it really yeah, because Interesting. then because you've got that the garment but then imagine cutting out the pieces that a garment gets sewn from right you've got all that waste fabric that hits oh, the yeah, cutting room right, floor of course so you've got all that and then God, you know it's thought like, about that so Oh, yeah, man. yeah, it's it's crazy the amount of of fabric waste that that uh, is produced by the fashion industry and the dyes and all the chemicals and like and then you 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 think of something like oh bamboo fabric was really popular for a while it's like right. well yeah it's soft and and nice but you know the 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 amount of chemicals that it takes to turn like bam, hard bamboo into fiber fi- never, that is yeah, woven I've never thought it's about like it. it's crazy never amounts of chemicals it. and then there's a a crazy uh you know blueprint of of uh you know of gasoline and everything else of or right. you know to, of shipping that bamboo fabric all, all from China and all over the the world and the people who who make that 
that fabric and like it's it's crazy well, it's how crazy. do you okay so let me ask you something it's so hard because i'm starting to become extremely cognizant of how much plastic i'm wasting how much of this bullshit happens yeah. and how is it that we are supposed to i mean obviously if everyone does their part it helps but at the end of the day it feels like everybody's going to leave a footprint somehow. Yeah, you will. So what the and fuck is, what's the answer? So is it just to do your best for your, for, do, for you, your if best. everyone just do, yes. like, for instance, yes. now when I go buy uh, a bottle of water or something, yeah. I'm picking the glass one. Absolutely. Start there. Absolutely. Um, if I'm, you know, even, I'm just, if for I go, the, if I go get For the environment a, and for your health. There too, you go, because exactly. You don't, there's right. all these little, like, of pieces course. of plastic in the water that you're ingesting. Yeah, that's no you know, good. So that's. So that, another one I do now is, um, I, if I go, let's to say I go get a coffee at Starbucks yeah. and they're like here or take away here. Usually I want to take it away. Now I'll say here if it's not plastic. So I drink it there real quick. But if I do take it yeah. away, I don't get the lid or the straw. Right. So okay. I, I it, yeah, so cool. little things yeah. like that like, add up, you know, that right there is 40% less plastic that I just walked out of the store with just by making that decision. Absolutely. So everyone, every, everybody thinks that way. I think that's pretty much all you can do because it's not our fault that we're born into a rigged game that has all this bullshit provided for us. It's so so fucking hard yeah. to get around it. Well, it's and, and it's so, fuck. I mean, you know, even once you work plastic, your way into like it's not, a convenience, once you work your way into a certain kind of convenience, it's hard to go back. You yeah, know? you know, it's like it's kind of like the you know once your standard of living is a certain way, it's hard to just, once like, you go black, you never yeah, go back again. Yeah, no, absolutely. no, or it's like they say, like one that I learned. I remember I got to fly on a private jet with Charlie Sheen, and he said to me, <laughs> he apologized to me, and I was like, why are you apologizing? And he goes, well, you know, once you go private, you're fucked because yeah. now everything else sucks. <laughs> now you have to, even if you go first class on United, now you know what you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like this, or uh, yeah, yeah, that's how I was luckily, looking. Like, what's the worst part about flying private? Not flying private right, anymore, right? right? right. You, Luck, you get luckily. Spoiled. I can I can fall asleep anywhere. Oh, are so, you one of those? You're, oh, oh, you're easy oh, sleeper. Oh, oh, and you're, oh yeah, yeah, I saw so, you sleeping and, at Burning Man in the sun yeah. outdoors in a beanbag. <laughs> like you're breathing in the dust. I was like, is that Tino? And you're just no, laying there. Just, yeah, and I was like, oh my God, that's yeah, Santino. That's yeah, that was, yeah, that was you sleeping, sleeping at I'll, noon. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just yeah. crash out Can we quickly talk about yeah. um, your Burning Man <laughs> exit strategy this year? I heard you briefly tell me about how you got out of Burning Man with some strangers. Yeah. You, first of all, I, I love how you, I'm, I went to Burning Man alone. Yeah. I'm a real one. I like to travel and do yeah. shit alone and have weird experiences and go way out of my comfort zone. Sure. Tell me how you exited Burning Man this year with some strangers. Quit the cliff notes. Give us the quick. Yeah, uh, you I know, love I, your story. You know, going to going going to Burning Man. I've done it all different ways. I've done it in the in the super expensive RV, uh-huh. and then I've done it in the small one man pup tent. You know, yeah. just and so. I learned kind of like how to navigate it. I learned what I need and what I don't need, you know, and I, and, um, I brought a lot of my things in this RV that was meant for these, um, uh, DJs who Diplo was bringing to. Burning yeah, I saw Man. you at Diplo yeah. next to my camp. Yes. You were in a tent. Were you in a tent? That was a tent. Uh, I was in a, I was it in was a dome. Nice I was tent. in a big a dome. dome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I, I, Drove the RV. This might be my favorite one. Oh, Sorry yeah, to cut you off. Nice. This one is called oh, okay. Spicy Sandia. Yeah. And this is watermelon Sandia. and ca- Sandia. Sandia. Yeah. And this is watermelon and cayenne pepper. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah. what a combination. I'm sorry to cut you off. That was very rude. Continue burning. <laughs> and so I, uh, I got to uh, Burning Man in this very nice RV that I did not stay in, but I br- got all my stuff there. And then I, I just knew I was going to wing it. I knew I was winging it to, wingman. to come home. And wingman. so, um, I had a lot of friends who were there. I probably know about 2000 people every time I, you know, every burn, like, you, like you, easily. That easily. you could do it. You wouldn't remember all their names, uh, but no, you know, but I know them. a lot of, and, and, and there's, and there's been years in the past where like, I didn't have a plan necessarily to get back either. Um, like I, I got there one way and then I, and then I ended up, uh, leaving to go to Portland, Oregon right, right after with some friends of mine who live in Portland. And then wow. I, and then I flew from Portland back to Los Angeles or whatever, you know, it's like, so you, just, you travel, right? So, yeah, so like, many people over plan and I'm um, a big fan no, of like, let's no just way. say for instance, you're going to Southeast Asia. What I'm a big fan of is, okay, book your ticket, get a hotel the first two nights and figure it out from yeah, there. Yeah, Not yeah, like, yeah. okay, we're spending six days here. No, we're spending no, five no, days. No. no, 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 no. Let the wind take yeah. you wherever the fuck yeah. you go. And that's yeah, one yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. being a solo, solo traveler yeah. is that you don't, 
don't have anyone else dependent on you because right. some people don't like to travel no, that way. No, no, no. I travel that way. I and I, because so. here's another reason why. Let's just say I'm out, like I was just in Bali for a couple of weeks and someone's like, hey, Friday night, let's do this. I go, you know what? That's five days from now. I don't know if in two days I'm going to be on, on, on no. uh, some other island right. and I don't want to let you down. So yeah. could we not make plans that far? They're like, it's five days away. I'm like, dude, that's <laughs> very far. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need to keep my shit open and not have anyone affected by my decisions. Absolutely. And it's not like, oh, I'm upgrading, doing better. No. I just want the wind to take me yes. where it takes me. Yeah. So you're like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Absolutely. That's the way to go. And that's, that's why also when you went to Bali, I was like so happy oh, for dude, you. And you were like, coaching wanted, me along yeah, the whole way. You're wanted, on my Instagram uh, every day, like go this place. Uh, and then I'd go, it. and then you'd tell me, go yeah, to this place, yeah, go to this temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would. Yeah. Oh, dude, so you're, you're a great. So and, dope, and I still dude. say Om Swastiastu. I got everyone saying that one. I even learned a couple. Om Swastiastu. I even learned. I learned another one. Oh, I learned another one. I learned to say, I learned a couple ones that really got them to smile. I wrote it down. I learned to say, uh, oh, God, let me see if you know what this one is. I just made a short, every day I made myself learn one new phrase. Awesome. But Om Swastiastu was the one that you walk in and here's their reaction. So say Om Swastiastu to me. I'm a local Balinese. Hey, Om Swastiastu. Om (laughs) Swastiastu. They're so happy that you say it and surprised that they say it back. Dude, because it's like like the most beautiful thing you can say to someone. It's, it's, it's basically, it's kind of the equivalent of namaste. You know, the the divine in me bows to the divine in you. And the, and like, you know. So what's the exact translation of Om? It's my, it's a blessing. And I know you're supposed to say it upon arrival, not leaving. Yes. I know that. Um, let's see. Let me see. Oh, here we go. This one I learned is, um, here, where is it? Oh, well, there's a, uh, oh, Akuchinta Kanu. I love you. Akuchinta Kanu. No. Akuchinta Kanu. That means I love you. And yeah. they just laughed. They yeah. thought it was so sweet. Yeah. The, let's, let's not go too deep into Bali, but it's the best fucking place in the <laughs> yeah, world. Stay away Here's, from Bali. Yeah, stay away. Stay and stay away, away from, from Burning Man. Nobody <laughs> stay go. Stay away from Burning Man. Fight Club. Stay first away. First club, first stay rule of Fight away. Club. Here's the other couple ones I learned is, um, um, is, uh, <laughs> Selamat Pagini ah. is a good, but that's at, there's certain times of day. Selamat Pagini is early morning hello, nice. like 3 a.m. Nice. So if you're at nice. it like 3 a.m. Selamat Pagini. They uh, couldn't believe Selamat you. I knew that one. Pagini. So here's my little list I accumulated That's right here. Beautiful. Santai, relax. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Santai. I got, uh, Santai. Santai. Um, so when are you planning to go Bali anytime soon? You know what? I don't. I, 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 I would love to go yeah. just right away now. Of course. But I... I um, I I don't want to visit Bali anymore. You want to go? Stay. I want to go and stay there and not come Fuck, back. I'm like, dude. and and so this is also a thing where like like when I the next time I go there, I am going to be there for like six eight months. Well, yeah, that's fine. Like you know what I mean. And so Burning Man or Bali? If, yeah, can you that's do both? the thing too. Yeah, can that's you do the thing both? Too. And you you'd be able to work you know, out there. I think so many. I have I have so many friends who they live between L.A., Paris, and and Bali, and they there's a way to do it. Basically, just fly around the world all the time, and they they make a lot of their their jewelry and their clothing in Bali. They do a lot, create a lot of art in Bali, make a lot of music there, and then they they come back to Los Angeles. And there's a way know. to do it. Yeah, there is a way to do. There's it. a way there's to a do way it to and do have it. a balance. And and there I is. was actually like, I think it was very Western and greedy of me. And I was looking at land to buy something out there. And then all of a sudden I realized I talked to my business manager and I talked to the couple other people that are like, look, do you really want a stressor of having a leaking roof 12,000 miles away? Just go <laughs> rent a villa for a month. <laughs> Go there once a month because it's so cheap to rent. It is. And plus, I want to hop around. I want to be in yeah. Ubud for a yes. while. I want to be in Uluwatu yeah. for a while. Yeah. I want to be in Chengdu. Chengdu. I want to bounce around a little bit yeah. and not just be married to one place yeah. and just float around because that place just pull. You show up and it pulls you wherever oh, it yeah. wants to pull oh, you. Yeah. It's a, it's a, that place can heal you. Yeah. I found, yeah. um, I found myself having similar that to, to Burning Man experiences out there where you, you you figure things out and you sort of have these self realization moments where you are forced to figure things out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a trip. You, you're such a beautiful soul. When you when you show up there, like it just blesses you. It just blesses you because you're already vibrating at that level. You're already open and just like so loving and so considerate. You know, like it's a it's a thing that maybe a lot of people don't d- know about you. But I, I think really they feel think like I'm really dirt nasty. Yeah, I don't no. think they really know. Dude. I mean, and I'm not going to say yeah. I'm not you're trying right. to ruin I'm not, your, no, 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 no. your reputation. No, okay. But, <laughs> but it's, you're lovely, dude. You're oh, lovely. Thank and you, when man. you show up, you can you can take you anywhere. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could introduce you to, to 
it, like anyone in any situation, I think you would be fully and totally adapt. comfortable and right. adaptable. Adapt I could go to, to the it. hood and yeah. I could go to a absolutely. Beverly Hills opening of a jewelry absolutely. shop. Yeah, and and that, the same goes that, for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And that's like, and I, right. and I, and it's in any time that I that I think about my closest friends too, and it's like it's it's people that can flow and do that yeah. with me. Flow like I can be at a, word, yeah. I can be you know front row at Christian Dior, and then I can be in this crazy like underground techno party in Paris yeah. where they only let in like 80 people and like it's super grimy, and then with asap you know? ferg in an alleyway yeah, yeah yeah totally whatever you know what i mean it's like and not everybody could do that no, no. yeah that's a unique soul and it's, and, and it's not being phony or anything no. like that it's just being it's like you know what it is it's like all being like water things, You're all being those like water. things yeah, have yeah. been in me my whole life yeah. like, like name any 80s rap group i've seen them in concert like three or four times right like my first show, you know, I, I saw the BC Boys in 1986. Uh-huh. Um, I saw... Where know, was this? In Back in, home in... St. Louis. In St. Yeah, Louis. Like yeah. any any rap group that came through St. Louis through you the 80s there. and 90s, I saw them. I saw Tupac when he was a backup dancer for Digital yeah. Underground. Wow. I saw... And then I saw the, a Digital Underground again at a small club. And then Tupac had already gotten super big. And so when it was time for his verse and I get around, they dropped this like no. crazy uh, like uh, 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 screen where... It it looked like he was like via satellite. Get out of yeah, here! Yeah, That's yeah, but it was amazing. it was so yeah. You know, you've been through it. Yeah, you've been in all uh, genres, cultures, all types of things. And uh, do you feel that of all the of all the scenes out there, of all the because I've been I've been lucky enough to be like you said, I've been everywhere from the Paris f- runways yeah, yeah. to you know the uh, alleyways of New York and hip hop. You know, with Stretch Armstrong listening to yep. some ghetto rap, yeah. you know, break record break to like you know being in. I mean uh, to being in like the the slums of of rio de janeiro like i've been everywhere and 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 i feel that of all the places i've been on this planet earth that uh the one place that and anthony bourdain said this too they said they they said to anthony bourdain someone asked him okay you've been everywhere on the planet where would you if you had to live one place where would it be he's without missing a beat bali yeah (laughs) without even a question the people, the food, the culture, the vibration, everything about that place yeah. is something's pulling me there. I've been four times in a year and a half, and uh, I, I'm going to end up there yeah. as well yeah. as you are. Something about that place is pulling me into to, life's too short. And yeah. when you go out there, you realize I'm, maybe I'm not so happy on the hamster wheel. No. When I was texting no. you from out there yeah. and I was saying, you know, bi- you're like, business is great. I'm killing it with the restaurant. Yeah. Everything's good. Yes. But I'd rather be out there yeah. doing yeah. something I'm less ambitious because yeah. it's, I think we're overdriven here. I think we, you know, we're around other people who are super successful and you just kind of get caught up and that's okay yeah. but there comes a point where it's like what's it really all about and that's what that place does to you it the, it, it shifts your perspective yeah. on life and the 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 one thing that keeps me here is is the fact that um what i'm doing and how i'm being of service to people and helping people heal through real food um is what keeps me here that's your purpose that's and that's ab- yeah, 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 absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely well, and like, so you have some more time to do that yeah, yeah I do. and then you could get out there and, and you could do it yes. out there oh, absolutely. because people are on absolutely. that tip out there people oh, are on, oh, in a big on way and i could the health and, tip. and i could you know um not not tooting my own horn but every every raw place every every vegan uh dish i've ever eaten in bali it's it's delicious but, but you everything could, do could be oh yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah. absolutely but everything they're open to it there yeah yeah, because you go around and every you know they have the bulletproof coffee. They yes. got the yeah. yeah. So they're on the yeah, tip. They're on it. They're, they're on, on it because it's there's a lot of people who are super conscious who have made it to Bali and who have created these these special places that if you're in the know, you'll you'll get there. You know, right. I mean, some people have some people have had experiences of Bali where they're like, ugh, I hate that place. I showed up. There were all these Australians. Everyone was drinking. The, it was like they were yeah, describing like yeah. they, they were like describing like Cancun or, or right, like spring right, right, break. Sure. Or something like that and then they were like and then and then i lost my wallet and then i fell off the scooter and then i was just like fuck this place i'm going back and like and it's like it just like the island chewed them up and spit them out because guess what they weren't ready for it they weren't they weren't open they the you can't come there and like fake it you can't come there and be like a like a crazy American tourist where you just like are being horrible to everyone and like no I didn't want that one I want that one no, like, that, you know, that it's like you will you will get chewed up and spit out even as nice as they are as lovely as they are there's like 
spiritual energy that is all around you everywhere you're at. I was like, I don't know if you've ever, it's like, I don't know if you've got a chance to, to eat the psilocybin there. In I, Bali, you know, you told me to go, Bali, but I, n- I but, never did but there. But talk no. about, talk about, uh, ingesting some plant medicine in Bali right. on the island and connecting to that island and really sealing, seeing and feeling everything that's going on there. It's so. So, it's there's no so words. There, there's something it's else. So ha- yeah, there, there, there's like, something else happening there. There's a freak that place is a portal to another dimension. And you know why? Do you know why? Like, well, the so, lay li- the ley lines is yes, that there's part the, of that. And where the where well, geographically Bali is on the, ma- the on earth, earth, right? It's the heart um, chakra. It is, is it, basically is, it basically uh, the there's places on the island which clean the air, places right. which clean the water, mm-hmm. places which clean the earth, places it's which the clean perfect the fire, crossroads, right? Like every everything, yeah, everything right there, and so. You know, it's when you go to places like I don't know if you've been to Cambodia either. My brother lives in Cambodia, and like never been to I, Cambodia, but it, I've been to Thailand Ang- and I've been to Angkor Wat, right? Um, and the temples sure. there. And never then, been there, but I get. So you know, you go to these places, and you're like, it has to be uh, divinely a- alien, you right. know, ancient alien, you yeah, know, connected. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in Bali too, it's a very similar thing where it's like they have history in Bali that that is pre-human, whatever that means. Yeah, you know no, no, I, mean? I get it. But then you also go to these places where it's like a huge monkey forest and like all these monkeys are around and like, it's like, who built this? And like, where it's like, it's like, like, are we from monkeys or like, is this yeah, what happened? Dude. Were we, were we all monkeys? And then like some There's divine some, intervention yeah. happened and then we became human. And then like we were, the, those people were so beautiful there that they were just blessed with an overabundance of amazingness. And they, and they, it's still such a part of their culture that they're, that they're so like connected to it. And like, there'd be no wavering them. There's no, there's, there's no like, there's even the young people are like very much understanding of their culture. Culture, and they don't even want to leave it. They're not. They're not trying to leave it. What's it called? I mean? Samsara. They're, con- yeah. they're they're not connected to the uh, the material world as no, much. And, and their 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 theory of life is like, for instance, you will see a celebration in the street. This is one thing I learned there. Yeah. You'll see a celebration in the street, and there'll be traffic really bad, and people are singing and dancing. And I'm like, what's that? Oh, that's a funeral. <laughs> yeah. and go, I'm sorry, I don't understand. They're yeah. celebrating. They go, oh yeah, yeah, they're not like you Americans, where when someone dies, you're banging on the casket, going, why me? Right. They're celebrating life because they know that it's an infinite circle and that yes. it's all part of a bigger picture. And yes. that's why you see a, a two-year-old child going 40 miles an hour on a scooter with no <laughs> helmet on because they don't live in fear, right? Yeah. So they're living yeah, on a exactly. completely different way. Like, you know what? That baby's going to be just fine. just fine. Whereas we overprotect yeah. and with yeah. laws and rules. And, yeah. you know, you rent a scooter, there's no contract and no paperwork and a fucking driver's license nah. and a deposit and a credit card. Uh-uh. They throw you the keys. Yes. No helmet if you don't want to. Park <laughs> facing backwards on the other <laughs> side of the street. And guess what? Pay us when you want later, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. We don't give a fuck. Amazing. I, I saw, dude, this I is know. in a nutshell. I'm going to wrap it up with this because uh, um, I got to go to this other thing in a minute because I could talk to you forever and we'll do part two another time. Okay. Uh, but I, this is, sums it all up for me is I was in Bali and I was uh, driving to meet some friends for like a karaoke night in Seminyak and there was a big fire, huge fire burning and all of a sudden traffic's being redirected. Everyone's, you know, fire. So we show up at the bar, we get there and everyone's like, oh man, you see that fire a few blocks away? We're like, yeah, we just drove around it. That's the owner of this bar is that's his house uh, so we're like oh man what are the chances that's crazy and this guy comes strutting in and they go there he is <laughs> so the owner of the bar whose house is still burning, burning. behind us yeah. there's still smoke and embers in the air oh and he walks up and he's just totally relaxed yeah. I, i'm more upset than he is yeah and he's completely relaxed and he's like hey and he, someone introduces me and i'm like is that your house burning right there and he's like oh yeah yeah and i go oh my god i'm so sorry uh, are you okay he's like yeah why and I'm like, because your house is burning. He goes, yeah. oh, he goes, oh, no, but nobody got hurt. Yeah. And you know, insurance, whatever, yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's, yeah, fine. it's fine. Well, I'll get another one. Yeah. And he gets on stage and proceeds to play guitar during wow. karaoke night. Wow. And I'm just looking at him and I go, that that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> I was more upset than he was. Yeah, totally. His house is burning behind me. Yeah. He's on stage having a smile and a beer and he's completely, it's already over. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that taught me so much. Yeah. It was Oh, God. That's a good one. That's That's just like, that's it right there, man. It's already over. Nothing to worry about. No one got hurt. It's fine, man. It'll work itself out. What are you worried about? It will. 
That's what a magical! And so, listen, everyone listening, don't go to Bali. <laughs> don't go to Bali. Don't fucking don't go. go to Burning Man, dude. We just I, look. I could look next time. I think I want to do a part two with you. Maybe we'll also have Austin on. Sure, I'd love yeah, to help yeah, yeah. Uh, like blow up his brand. <laughs> and I want to I want to go deeper into more of uh, more of of your of your beautiful uh, endeavor into the health food stuff and t- tell some more fashion stories because I know you sure. got some oh, good got ones. Some this was just ones. a scratch in the surface. Oh, uh, dude, I love you. I love where, you, brother. Where does everybody find you at if they want to f- stalk you? On- uh, you can find. Find me on Insta- Instagram. What is it? What's Santino the name? Santino Rice. Okay. And you can visit uh, at Wild Living Foods as okay. well. Um, and you can come see me if you're in LA. If you're in LA and where you want is some, it? Where's the restaurant? some beautiful food, uh, it's at 8th and Main in the Fashion District in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, it's where I've been living in LA since 1993. Is that right? You've yeah. lived there. I've been an early adopter of downtown. I've wow. been there since before anything was down there. You've but seen I, the transformation. I did. Wow. But I, I didn't understand why people wouldn't want to have cheaper rent mm-hmm. and be closer to the fashion business, which yeah. I was, I could walk to everywhere that I, that I, I went. So, well, dude, it's, yeah. it's good to see love you doing you. your thing. Love you. And love everybody, you, love everybody, you, love everybody love, love, love anybody comes to LA, please go check them out and go get some healthy food and live a healthy, happy life. One love. Suck your own dick.